Hi there, thanks for joining me. Uh, today I'm going to show you a new feature in K2 uh, Black Pearl version 4.6.1 uh, called the Oracle Service Broker. So I created a Oracle database called K2 Demo and populated some data into a table called Student. As you can see there's a couple of fields in this table and also uh, quite a, a few rows of data um, that I've populated just as for demo purposes. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to actually open the K2 workspace. You'll see under the K2 management console um, there's a new service that was added with uh, 4.6.1 which is now the Oracle service. And you can go and add a an instance that points to that specific database. You'll see there's some pre-populated values and one of the most important ones is obviously on this owner list um, in my case it will be demo 2 but to see that specific schema you can actually register this instance but you won't see that schema if the owner list isn't correct so as I mentioned in my case it will be k2 demo I'm just going to add that specific value into there and then also the connection string for some guys this connection string will work if you put in the right username and password but I find that the longer connection string um, that I'm going to use here and some of the items that you need to, uh, to take a look at is typically the host in my case it's dlx.denelix.com obviously your port which it was installed to and then finally uh, the service name by default uh, with my Oracle uh, installation it's called XE um, I've got my user ID and then also my password. So those are the, the most important um, items that you need to, uh, to take account of. I'm just going to copy that uh, connection string into there. And then you'll see there's a couple of uh, other fields in here that, uh, that will bring back the package. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make all of them true make sure I bring back all of the artifacts, um, the tables, the views, procedures, etc. Alright, this stage I'm just going to change my display name to something um, a little bit more friendly. I'm just going to call it XE and, uh, and we will save that at this point. What it's now doing is actually creating an instance against that uh, specific uh, schema or database and now I'm ready to go and create a smart object against uh, that instance. I think I'm done with my workspace for the moment. So what I've also done on this uh, specific VPC is I've installed the K2 Forms B.2 uh, component. So it's it's probably the easiest way to go and uh, create small objects and then also expose it via pay, well basically forms with uh, with a couple of views. I'm going to show you how easy it really is to get to that uh, to that data. Uh, it depends on you. Obviously, you can use any front end. I do. I must say, with uh, K2 Smart Forms, it, it really makes it very, very easy. I'm going to start off by creating a small object. Pretty simple. So I'm going to just choose Advanced Smart ob Object. I'm going to call this Smart Object Student. Um, and here, here's where the power of the uh, the platform as well as the UI comes in. So you'll see. Um, you can go and add a specific method or you can basically just say um, you'll see in the service object explorer uh, we should have a XE which uh, which I registered the XE instance and then you're going to see all the tables which is in my schema it'll expose that as well the same that you'll see uh, within the Oracle SQL developer um, the same tables will be exposed there so what I do is I basically just drag across my student it automatically picks up all my uh, my properties and methods and I'm just going to say I want to create all of them so it's going to create all my properties and methods automatically on this small object you'll see there's my create, read, update, delete list and obviously it's got a additional list for paging as well and there's all my properties so it just pulls it in I'm just going to click finish and for now that's as simple as it is to create my ob small object using my service instance that's pointing to my Oracle broker. Now to use this small object I'm just going to go to right click and say generate views I'm going to say I want a detail or an item view and also a list. 
I'm going to generate a form and I'm immediately going to run that form to show you in a few simple clicks it's going to bring back data from my Oracle database um, and I can start manipulating that data <coughs> there we go so you'll see there's, uh, there's quite a few records that it's brought back um, it's also implemented the paging now one of the things as you can see uh, one of the methods um, instead of load what what would typically be the default it said re read so usually if it, if it was load it will automatically wire up the click event of this list and it will populate my detail as well I'm just going to quickly go in and, uh, and just wire that up because then I can immediately start uh, updating some of the information I'm going to add a rule on the, the form level itself I'm going to say uh, when a view raises an event which is the item so I want on that item uh, if, if it actually if it uh, gets clicked oh sorry I wanted to say student list so uh, so basically on the list item click I want to perform a specific action and what that action will be is to go and load the detail um, in this case the read as you can see I want to actually read the information and then load it into that detail view. I'm going to go, I'm going to get the value from my student list, which is the student ID. I'm going to pass it to that specific view method, and, uh, and that should do it. Let's see. So I'm going to click on finish. It's going to save it back, and I'm immediately going to just run that form. All right, then we've got our data. Now, if I click on each record, it should just basically go and read that information. What's nice about it at this stage, and it's a fully functional um, list of records, you can see that's the last record. I'm going to click on it, and I'm actually going to delete it. And if you go right back to the last row, row it, uh, it should be gone. Let's just see. Mm, no, I don't think it actually uh, refreshed completely. There we go. So, uh, so that is now uh, deleted and what I'm going to do now and, and that is as I mentioned as simple as it can really get one of the other powerful features of the smart object technology within uh, within K2 is you can also uh, take each and every smart object and expose that um, as a REST service as well as a WCF web service now what I've done I'm just going to open my k2server.config file which you can find in k2 blackpool the host server bin folder um, it's actually called k2server.xe.config and with regards to configuring if you scroll down right it's about it's almost to the bottom I think yeah there we go just go and search for a node called smart object services or SMO services you'll see by default enable endpoints is usually uh, equal to false if you enable the endpoints and you set it to true it's going to take each and every small object and expose that as a WCF um, web, web service or REST endpoint which might not necessarily be what you want to do if you put it to true uh, what's nice about there's a diff, uh, different node under managed uh, endpoints usually it will also say excluded all um, will be true uh, you can just make that false and then under this endpoints node you can go and include all the different uh, categories as you can see on the left hand side that you want to be excluded from creating the endpoints in my case I've excluded everything except the Oracle demo and I think multiple tasks um, but the Oracle demo one is definitely my most important one and another neat little trick um, if you go to a URL, it's called uh, under your specific server address. Usually, by default, the port is uh, 8888. You'll see under Smart Object Services, forward slash endpoints, forward slash endpoints.xml. If you run that specific file, it will actually go and show you um, all the endpoints that's exposed. And in my case, you can see that under WCF, it actually exposed that specific uh, category for me and also under the rest endpoint you will see the student all the methods that you saw uh, in the previous part of the demo with create, read, update, delete, list and list paging has been exposed so the powerful thing now is I can very easily go and uh, 
create a small little program which I which I did beforehand and all this program does is it actually just calls that WCF service uh, with a couple of values you can just see some of my variables there um, it's going to actually call the create on the WCF service the save or update method it's going to call the load or read method the delete and get list so basically what I'm going to do now I'm going to run this program it's going to go to the first breakpoint and I'm just going to quickly run back to my uh, my smart form and I'm going to click in or actually enter my surname it should come back with nothing um, as that record hasn't been added yet but at this stage as you can also see under the service reference um, I've added a, a reference I'll show you now that looks uh, after this or let's just quickly stop the program uh, I'm just quickly going to show you how that uh, service reference uh, looks same thing server name port 888 small object services w wcf and then uh, the last part will typically be the category name that you want to use and it exposes that web service with all the different methods that you need to create uh, or, or to be able to call all right i'm going to run that service quickly the first part is just going to create a record um, as i mentioned previously you won't see that record at the moment uh, i'm going to run it again and when I go back and refresh, let's just see if it's gone through. It should be there. And here it is. There we go. Took a little while. Okay. So there's my record. I can click on it and you'll see it's going to bring all the fields back. All right. At the, the next step, it's just going to update uh, that record. So it's going to do a fully functional. Um, update and it's going to change that surname to Graeber van Jürgen Graeber I mean it's just going to add that little part to the surname and the next part it's just going to load it in the, uh, in the little console window so it brings it back and the last uh, the last uh, that specific one you will actually go and delete that record so if I click on the refresh you'll see that it actually deleted it and the last part it will just basically go and list the top 10 rows of that table just bring back some data so again with WCF um, web service I were able to call and update all of the different methods the next little part is again the same thing it's just using the rest uh, endpoints same pro thing that I'm trying to do it's going to create that record there you go it's actually going to update it Here we go, and you have the and the next part, as per previously, it's deleting that record, so it should be gone. And if I now refresh, go to my console, you'll see the output from that REST service in a list brought back all the information uh, from all of uh, the student records. A couple of uh, couple of records that you can see there, and that's basically it. So you can see very easily with a couple of clicks. Um, a bit of configuration you can actually uh, communicate to a Oracle database or an Oracle um, data source and the, the most powerful thing of this framework is that any smart object or any backend or any broker that you write you can uh, you can do the same with uh, with that you can expose it as some WCF web servers rest endpoints and also use that smart object on uh, smart forms Thanks for joining me for the demo. Um, I hope you learned something interesting today. Thanks.